Legend of Akora The Coronation Legend of Akora The Coronation Recap Prince Wu laid out how his coronation is going to go for Mako. Meanwhile, Mako asks Raiko if he is the person that they want to run the Earth Kingdom. Raiko reassures Mako that they will be sending advisors to deal with the day-to-day -day issues of the Earth Kingdom. Raiko asks Tenzin on the location of the Avatar. Ten Tenzin asks airbenders to search for her. Raiko reassures both Tenzin and Mako that Kovir will be standing down. Tenzin would feel a lot better if Kor was here. Kor asks Tuff to help her. Tuff decides to help her and schools her, schools Kor on when she was chief of police in Republic City. The names of the criminals changed, he said, but the streets stayed the same. We learn that Toph is still Toph and is and will forever be the original Beifang. Bolin runs into Eska, his past lover. Eska is a crazy waterbender from the from the south water tribe. Bolin runs into her runs into her at the hotel before the coronation. Bolin is afraid of afraid of Eska. Eska congratulates him on on the new boss and girlfriend, Corvia Corvira. We learn that Verric was pardoned of his crimes by Raiko at the request of Corvira. Mako and Bolin run into each other at the hotel. This is a very popular hotel. They catch up by telling each other by telling one another what each other has been up to. Bolin finds out about Cora missing from Mako. But Tia Jr. runs into Su Ying, his mother, at the hotel. Tells her that his name is now Batir, not Batir Jr. And that him and Corvier will be getting married. Su Ying's not too happy about that. Corvira and Prince Wu conversation does not go well. He hits on her a little bit. Corvira tells him that she had his things removed from the presidential suite. Prince Wu is surprised and sad. Prince Wu discovers that his coronation will not go as planned. Cora and Toph spar. Cora gets her butt whipped by an old woman. Toph enjoys it very, very much. Cora is lacking her mojo. Toph tells Cora that she is connected far more than than she will be to the world. Prince Wu's coronation. Corvira refuses to pass his power to Prince Wu and demolishes the Earth Kingdom and making it into a new Earth Empire. Her inspiration for this comes from living in Zafu and learning from Su Ying. She threatens the other nations if they oppose her. Bolin is, Bolin is concerned of how Corvair is about her ideals. Corvair convinces Bolin to help her. 
Suyin shows up to speak to Quivira as a representative of as a representative of the other nations which are concerned. So Yin and Quivira's conversation leads nowhere. We learn why Su Yin holds a grudge towards Quivira and why Quivira left Zafu. Quivira tells Su Yin that they are coming for Zafu. Bolin and Mako conversation goes into the wrong direction. Mako believes Quivira's motives and Bolin believes that she wants to help like Korra does. Toph enjoys beating up the Avatar way too much. And reminds her that she is an old lady. Then tells her tells her about the metal still in her system. Kara believes that it is the reason why her mojo is not the way it is. Toph tells her that it might be just her. She asks Toph to take it out, the rest of the metal out of her system. No mall aces a store sells Quivira clothing. Prince Wu does not approve. Prince Wu is chased and discovers a throne at the mall. Not a real throne, but a mock-up of the Earth Kingdom throne. Mako tells Prince Wu, the real, what have you done for the Earth Kingdom compared to what Kavir has done? Mako doesn't approve of what Kavir is doing, but he gives it real to Prince Wu. Toph tries to metal bend the pieces of me pieces of metal in Akara's body, but she can't because Akara cannot stay relaxed. She has a lot on her mind. Toph tells her when she's ready to metal bend the pieces out, she could do it herself because Toph doesn't have time for the BS. Tenzin recruits his kids to find Korra and explains that it's the utmost importance for them to find her. We learn at the very end the reason why Varric and his assistant took a piece of the spirit tree. Varric wearing a sadistic a crazy lab outfit and headsets looking like he's gonna create a monster in the lab on the train and Corvira up high telling them they need to focus on this technology and this technology alone. What are they doing with the spirit tree? He applies it. He's applying it to some kind of machine as, it, as he still remains dressed as a mad scientist. This has been a recap of The Legend of Akora, Akora Nation. Thank you for listening. Now, it's time for the review. Uh, my recap um, review of A Legend of Akora um, episode 4 The Coronation. It was a really good episode. There's a lot going on. I'm not really sure of what to think about it, really. 
Um, what's the first thing? Um, first thing I want to talk about is Corvair not wanting to give up her power. Oh boy. Just when you thought, just when Prince Wu thought he was gonna become king of the Earth Kingdom, this happens. You know, he he got hit with with an um with his stuff being removed in the in the hotel. He got hit with with all the jewelry being stolen and looting and. Disappointment as a disappointment, and when Kavir decides she doesn't want to step down, Grant Prince Wu is not the type of person you will want to run run the Earth Kingdom, but he is kind of untied of it through lineage, and Kavir wants to put an end to that, stop that, and start her own regime. Now, Grant, she has the backing. She has the military force. She stabilized the Earth Kingdom. She's basically ran around putting fear into the eyes of the citizens of the Earth Kingdom. And she said, and it, in the end of her speech, um, let me get into her speech. Her speech was, for one, you learn the inspiration is from living in Zhao Fu and living with <laughs> being around Su Yin. She played a role in the ideal of no more kings and queens, the, letting monarchies being demolished and and the people just ruling themselves. Okay, granted, that's understandable, but she is kind of that's kind of what. Kavir is doing because she wants to be she wants to rule the Earth King. She's not demolishing the monarchy. The ideals of monarchies. Um, um, And then at the end of her speech at the end she said if any whatever any nation that gets in her way that would be crushed. And she crushed that metal that um, Kyoshi Medal of Honor that was given to her, and she made, she made her point. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, the we as the artists were not too surprised that Corvia was gonna do this. Um, she's a villain. She's I wouldn't say a villain, but they're not doing a really good job of us, you know, sympathizing this. But I guess when you look at her and compare her to Prince Wu. We never know. We never know. He might, um, we might actually root for her. Um, the second thing is tough. Tough in chorus scenes. Awesome. Tough in the chorus scenes were, were pretty good. Uh, tough is still tough. Um, even though she's older, um, she kicks the avatar's butt and she enjoys it brings her back to the old days the old days of Aang and and yeah she she kicks the butt of the avatar puts Korra basically in place and she's and then she's so surprised that that Korra can't even sense the metal in her body that she she still has metal in Korra Cora has still metal in her body. She senses it, and Cora asks her to take it out. We see more of Toph when Cora tries to hug her and and basically puts a rock between them. Classic Toph. And um, we and, and um, when she tries to take out the metal out of her body. Car is not willing to let her win. I think all the scenes with Car and Top was awesome. It was the best treat that the creators could give us to give us an update of what this character has been up to. Um, I'm was surprised at how short she was. She looked like she was still she was aging from a she was a child because in the in the flashbacks in in previous seasons of Legend of Korra she looked a little taller. Grand. I wasn't disappointed. I didn't. That that was the only thing I was disappointed about. That she was short, but she was still tough. She was still tough, and she she served it. 
she served it like, as she is. The third thing is that Bolin and Mako, they first see each other and they update. Of course, Mako doesn't like being a bodyguard. Um, Bolin loves serving in the military and helping, um, helping people. And he sees that Corvair is doing something good. Mako, <coughs> excuse me, I'm edit that out. Um, Bolin believes that Corvair is doing good, and Mako he kind of questions it. He questions her, what her real motives and why she's doing what she's doing, and. It's not that hard to um, to actually you know say yeah, um, Kavir is doing good, but what's Prince Wu doing you know? And uh, Mako puts Mako doesn't put a pat. He doesn't. He sees what Kavir is doing, but he sees the way Prince Wu is, and he kind of puts him in this place when he goes to that to that to the mall to sit sit at that fake throne, and he's like, "What have you done? Like you haven't done anything." So would you want yourself to be king? And then, basically, he put <laughs> he put him in his place. And he, I, I hopefully we see Prince Wu. He think he thinks about his position, and he starts, you know, trying to get back his power. Or he he sneaks in, Ba Sing Se, try to build a rebel army who of of n people who are not supporters of Kavira. Um. Fourth, it's the Suyin and Corvair scene. Uh, Suyin comes as a representative of the other nations because they are worried about what is Corvair doing. Uh, Corvair gave Raiko his his word that she would be stepping down, but she's not. And this all circles back to the ideals that Suyin um, taught or um, spoke about. Ver uh, spoke about outly about um about the earth kingdom and the rule the mar the rules of kings and queens so yin unbelieved that should exist people should be allowed to rule themselves but um we learn in this scene that so yin was asked to stabilize the earth kingdom she refused she wanted to wait it out and see if i guess see if the people were um were going to resolve their own issues. Um so Kavir stepped up and I guess um I wouldn't say Suyin's Suyin is disappointed at the decision she Kavir made. She's not jealous and she hears the rumors of how Kavir is um gaining supporters Forcing um, nations to join her, um, obtaining um, soldiers, so it's not a very good thing. And um, we see that they that they talk about this. And the last thing that's, that um, that um, Kavira says, then you know it's coming to Zafu. Like they left Zafu, the last thing for them for them to to do. Which is crazy, and what and Ver Varric, oh my God, Varric. We found out he was pardoned, so maybe um, Asami's father is pardoned too by Raiko because I I'm assuming that Korea requested because Korea requested Ver Varric to be pardoned, so we're assuming that um, Asami's dad, who's supposed to be in the show, ha has been pardoned as well too, and he is. T on working for her, uh, we don't know what um, Varric is trying to do. He's in this mad scientist lab suit, and he has taken him and his assistant has taken a piece of the spirit tree. Whatever that will do is going towards an advanced weapon. Of course, there's gonna be a weapon that he's creating for Corvira. Um, we don't. To speculate, I, I think um, it's something that they're going to be using um, to eliminate Zafu, to attack Zafu, or um, 
whatever it is, it, Kravir sees it as important and tells him this is your sole purpose to get this technology up and running. And maybe this will be the thing that, you know, either puts Korra back into the plane, back on the, on the in the game, maybe might awaken her spiritual self, sensing that there's danger, since it is a spiritual they took a piece of a spiritual tree and applying it as to 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 technology and might be using it as a weapon to power something we don't know but um but um we do know that the the spirit spirit trees is and there is energy coming from it um energy that is probably collecting from around the world just like in um the tree in the swamps in last airbender where he found where Aang used to discover um, his um, earthbender would be tough. So it goes to say that maybe that's what it is. But to wrap this up, this was a really good episode. It was amazing. And I want to know more. And it gets better and better and better as it goes. So this is the third episode, I believe. And it, and. Um, I really want to know what is very trying to do and how now I want to know how um, Bolin is going to feel when the car comes will car be a career supporter or anti-career supporter and how will Bolin and uh, how Mako and Asami fit in all this is Mako still a bodyguard <laughs> does he have to be ugly to protect Prince Wu um these other questions. Oh, and will Toph leave the swamps and reunite with her her daughters and and help them protect Zafu? Things to think about. Thank you for watching this review and thank you for surviving it. Have a nice day. Bye.